Hi, this is Alex Efros, President and Founder of Athlon Wealth Management. With all the uncertainty and volatility in today's markets, investors are often left wondering who they can trust to guide them in achieving their financial goals. With so many individuals currently relying on Wall Street stockbrokers to help them make major investment decisions, it's important to understand the qualifications and training necessary to become a licensed broker, as well as the sales tactics and business models currently being used in the highly lucrative brokerage industry. I recently had a rare opportunity to sit down with the FINRA licensed Wall Street stockbroker to discuss various topics pertaining to modern personal finance. On a condition of anonymity, this broker, who we will call John for purposes of this interview, reveals surprising insights seldom spoken outside the doors of today's prominent brokerage firms. So John, thank you for taking the time to sit down and speak with us today about the brokerage industry. I really appreciate it. Not a problem. Thank you for having me. So why have you chosen to speak with us today? Uh, well, really the main reason is change. Um, I want to see a lot of change in the brokerage industry, uh, in the financial industry altogether. Um, I think there's been a lot of wrongdoing and things can really work a lot better. Um, and I want to start uh, that change. I want to have people see and hear the information that I have to offer. And tell us a little bit about how you became a broker. Um, well, it was years and years ago. I was actually in college, uh, in computer lab. I was sitting there looking for a summer job on the internet. Um, I was on Craigslist, and I saw a post, um, you know, hiring broker trainees, a Wall Street office, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, to me, a Wall Street office, you know, Wall Street is synonymous with money, you know, Bentleys, mansions. Long Island, um, humongous houses, and, and et cetera. So um, I heard a Wall Street office. I said, you know, I, I want. I'll, I'll do anything. Uh, I'll go. Um, I'll do anything. So I, I wrote a resume, cover letter. I sent it to them, um, and they got back to me. I went in for an interview, got the job, and uh, the rest is history. Okay. And tell us a little bit about the, the interview process. What was that like? The interview process. Um, well, I came in expecting you know, a lot of questions about my background, uh, financial education, and, and etc. The, the interviewer, there were two people interviewing me. They didn't really care about where I went to school, what courses I was taking, uh, whether I, I had a BA, an MBA, a CPA, a uh, CFA, none of that really mattered. Um, it was more about my sales experience. Um, they asked me if if I ever had a sales job before. Um, and they just really wanted to see how, how active I am as a speaker. Uh, at one point, one of the brokers interviewing me actually took out a pen from his pocket, um, showed it to me and said, take 30 seconds, um, look at this pen, study it, and sell it to me. Um, I sat there, I looked at the pen um, for about 20, 25 seconds, and I said, I'm ready. And I started selling him the pen. I said, you know, this pen can write in blue, in red, in green. Uh, it can write upside down, it can write underwater, anything. It's the most amazing pen in the world, buy it. Um, he liked it a lot. He said, you know, great. I, I like your enthusiasm about the pen, I like the bullet points, but I actually wanted you to sell me a thousand pens. Right. What if I can buy a thousand and you weren't ready to sell me a thousand? What if I can buy a million? And that really, you know, Took me, took me aback by surprise. I said, wow, this guy really thinks big. Um, I, I'd love to work for him. I can't wait. He showed me his paycheck. Last month, he made 72000 I said, okay, what can I start? What do I have to do? Am I qualified? Can I start? They pulled out the paperwork. They gave it to me half an hour later. Um, I was ready to be approved um, by the back office for a broker training position. Okay. And, and tell us a little bit about the training you received. Training. Um, <laughs> sales training was in abundance. Um, basically, a lot of things to say. Uh, scripts, pitches, uh, rebuttals. Uh, to make it simple, a, a script of a pitch would be written out of how you would present a company, a certain company, ABC, to a prospect or a client. Um, you would write it out 
and very provocative and very sales-like language. Um, and then you have rebuttals or things to say back when a prospect says no. Obviously, every prospect says no. Um, and that's what you, that's, that's, that's the train. You go home on the train, on the bus, in your car. You're, you're studying rebuttals. You're studying the pitch and, until it's perfect. Tonality has to be perfect. You have to be loud. You have to be enthusiastic. It has to be perfect because all they can hear is your voice. Um, whether you know anything about the stock or actually know anything about the stock, second there. Um, whether you know the PE ratios or peg ratios or anything like that, it's really unnecessary. It doesn't sell, so you don't need to know. Okay. And you mentioned rebuttals. What are some rebuttals you commonly get, and how are you taught to deal with them? Well, there's really um, maybe five or six categories of rebuttals. Uh, one is the obvious one's not interested, another one's I gotta talk to my wife, or I already have an advisor or a broker, um, and you handle them all in really the same manner. I have an advisor. Great. That's the first thing you say. Everything is great. Doesn't matter because you want to sound positive. I already have an advisor. Great. I'm not looking to sever any relationships. All I want to do is add to his performance. Let's buy ABC. Let's buy just a thousand shares. Let me show you what I can do for you, and I promise that most of your money is going to come to me instead of your current buyer. Sounds great, although it doesn't have to be true. I didn't lie, I didn't misrepresent anything, but it sounds great. Okay. And during the training, was there any financial analysis or accounting taught? <laughs> um, no, no accounting, um, no financial analysis. I mean, some brokers sit there and look at charts and they think they know how to read charts. Um, but they really don't. They, they look at, you know, maybe may a support level to make themselves feel better about a stock that's falling faster than that. Um, it's all about having themselves believe in the company. Um, when you have a financial crisis, fundamental and technical analysis is quite important. And obviously you've seen a lot of brokers and brokerage firms not perform to the way they should have. It, it wasn't very. It wasn't very hard to predict uh, a bear market. It was actually in April and May where uh, you can say, okay, this the Dow is in a bear market. The S and P is in a bear market. What we need to do is protect our clients, or get out of the market because there's too much risk. Nobody did that. People kept buying. People kept pitching stock. It's madness. And you mentioned some rebuttals and how you address those. What are some sales techniques to get a client interested in the first place? Sales techniques. Enthusiasm is the number one biggest sales technique. Um, people buy because of enthusiasm. If you have seen an infomercial at 2 in the morning where Billy Mays is screaming about something, he's enthusiastic. Right. Whether you need the silly putty that fixes your car or not is secondary. Um, you are going to buy because he's excited and it makes you excited. It's, it's, it's like a virus. It's, it's viral. Um, so excitement sucks. You know, number two, you, and, and you have to do anything. You, you stand up, you walk around the room, you um, scream and yell, you have CNBC blasting in your office just to make it sound like it's, it's exciting in the office. Because it's all about audio. The, the client paints pictures in his head based on what you sound like. So if you sound a little unsure um, and kind of like, well, yes, I think this company will do great, nobody's interested in buying that. You don't sound sure. But if you say, John, this company is going to return 20-25% in the next two months, I strongly believe it. You don't guarantee it. You strongly believe it. Or it's in your honest opinion, whatever the, the language pattern is there. Right. But if you sound sure and excited, people will believe in you and they will buy. Because that's really the, sale, the main sales techniques that we have there. Okay. And what are the qualifications necessary to, to become a stockbroker? <laughs> Um, basically a pulse, you know, a, a body that, that can move and speak, and uh, not a terrible criminal record, so no, no felonies. Um, a couple of misdemeanors, fine, no problem. Uh, it will be on your license, but it's no big deal as long as you haven't committed like, um, any financial fraud or anything like that, you're a broker. You can be 17, 18 years old, 
making half a million dollars a year talking about a company you know nothing about just because you're saying the same thing day in and day out. You're a glorified telemarketer. And how, how much in assets under management can a typical broker, I mean, you mentioned someone could be 18 years old, can they expect to be managing at that point, you know, when they're, when they're just getting into, into the business? And also, what, how big do the accounts get? Uh, well, it really depends on the broker and a little bit of luck. Um, the more you smile and dial, the luckier you get. The harder you work, the luckier you get. Um, you had, some brokers ask for bigger orders than others. So that makes a difference. Just like the guy that interviewed me wanted me to sell him a thousand pens. If I'm bringing you a hundred shares of ABC and you can really buy 5,000, I could potentially be a much bigger account than a smaller account. But you can raise hundreds of thousands. You can raise millions of dollars in a day. Does it happen often? Not extremely. But it all depends on how many hours you work. A broker works, a good broker, a producer, works at least 12 hours a day uh, on the phone 90% of the time. 90% of the time. You think, what do you think, we learn something about finance or we sit there and read charts and talk to analysts and read reports. We don't do any of that. We're on the phone telling people what to do, what to buy. Once they buy, we get paid. If nobody buys, we go home without bread. I hope you enjoyed this part of the interview. Stay tuned for the next part for more valuable insights into the brokerage industry.